Welcome to Backyard Bliss. Aloha. We are here today with Steve DeWald of Steve's Gardening to talk Backyard Bliss. He is a local landscape expert who has been working in Hawaii for more than 20 years. Aloha, Steve. Hey, Let's take afternoon. a moment. Good afternoon. Aloha. And please, if you could, just take a minute to introduce yourself to our viewers today and tell them a little bit about what you do. Sure. So my name is Steve DeWald. I've been a landscape contractor here on Oahu since 1993. Um, we primarily specialize in mostly high-end custom residential work. We also do some military work as well as commercial work as well. That's Thank you so much for being here today. We are going to dive right into these questions, but before we get started, I would like to thank Pacific Pool and Spa. Today's session is actually made possible by Pacific Pool and Spa, who have been in the business of Backyard Bliss themselves for quite a long time. I'd like to share a message from them now and thank them for their generous support. Again, thank you, Pacific Pool and Spa. So many of us are spending so much more time in our outdoor spaces. Our backyards and lanais have become our oasis and escape from the house over the last few months. Uh, so I just want to dive into some questions for Steve about how we can make our backs, backyards, front yards, spaces, outdoor spaces, the best that they can be. Uh, I have a yard right now and I want grass. How do I select the grass type that is going to survive and look good uh, in my yard? How do I make that decision, Steve? Um, well, there's several types of turf grasses that do very well here in Hawaii. The, the first thing to really consider in terms of how well a grass is gonna grow is the amount of sunlight you have in your yard. So the, the rule of thumb is the wider the blade of grass, the more shade it can tolerate because it can make more photosynthesis. So, you know, a good example would be St. Augustine grass would do well in a more shaded area as opposed to something like a emerald zoysia or Bermuda grass that has a very fine blade that's going to want to be in the full sun. No, that makes complete and total sense. So the wider the blade, then the more shade tolerant it, it will be. Now, as far as one mistake, uh, above all others that you see people make when they do have sod installed, uh, what do you think that mistake is? Um, I think for the most part, most people select the proper type of turf. Um, I think the biggest mistake that I see made is improper preparation. Um, you know, so a lot of times we see some people just, you know, for lack of better words, slap the grass down. Um, you really got to take your time to, to, grade the lawn area, make sure you have the proper amendments there, you know, roll it and, and, and really make sure that that subgrade is where you want it to be and then put your sod down. That's, that's critical in order to obtain a nice flat lawn. Now, I know that some people opt to seed their lawn instead of installing sod. Can you talk about the primary differences between installing with seed and installing with sod? Sure. So there's some grasses that will grow from seed here, um, typically things like Bermuda grass. Um, most of our turf grasses here are creepy grasses, creepy crawly grasses, things like St. Augustine, zoysia grasses, centipede grass. These are all creepers. Um, and so the, the primary way to install a creeping grass is not really by seed. It's either going to be sod, which a lot of people are familiar with. It's like rolling out carpet. You could plug it, which is that kind of tic-tac-toe board look you see, where you have little tufts of grass spaced out. And the third way would be stolenization, which is basically install in rooted cuttings and then cover it with some kind of an insulator, whether that be hydromulch or a thin layer of soil. So I do want to talk about plant selection. Uh, how should a homeowner approach really making decisions about what type of plants to include in their landscape design? 
So Hawaii has a lot of microclimates. Um, that's probably the first thing to really consider. Um, you know, look at the environment that you're in. You know, are you are you in the deep shade up in Nuuanu, or you know, are you on the beach in Kailua? Um, those are going to be your first your first factors that you need to consider to make choices. You know, if you're on the beach, you definitely want to pick things that are saltwater tolerant, that are wind tolerant, um, and and that will take a lot of sunshine, as opposed to maybe something up in Nuuanu that's going to be constantly wet in the shade. So, you know, if you pick the right plants, you're already a step ahead. You can definitely cheat once in a while by, by planting in certain layers or levels and get away with some things. But it's always best to try to, to stick with what works for that, for that microclimate. No, that's great. And of course, uh, native plants are coming back around. They're all the rage. As far as incorporating native plants, uh, just give me a list of some of your favorites. Um, I really like using pohina hina. Um, that's a nice ground cover, does well by the beach. Now, paca is something that everybody uses by the beach. Um, Akia is another one. It's a really delicate little shrub that occasionally has red berries on it. Really low maintenance, does very well. Um, so a, a lot of the natives that we're using are actually, you know, really do well in the wind and the salt environment, obviously, because they're native to here. Um, there are some natives that do better in the wetlands. However, those aren't used as much in landscaping. And then I know that some people do believe when they are making tropical plant selections that these are native plants. Can you just talk a little bit about the difference? Yeah. So I think, you know, what a lot of people, especially maybe folks moving here, um, you know, think like the, the, the Hilton Hawaiian Village look. Um, you know, those are tropical plants. Those are not Hawaiian plants. Um, so there's definitely a distinctive difference between the two. Tropical landscaping and, and Hawaiian plant material is definitely not the same thing. Um, there are some very attractive native Hawaiian plants. And there's also a lot of native Hawaiian plants that have a kind of more weedy look to them. Um, but, but, you know, things like ginger and haliconia and monstera, those are not native plants. Those are tropical plants, which have been imported. Thank you for making that distinction. Uh, you know, for many of us, whether it's tropical or, or native plants, we are trying to create an oasis in our backyard, a retreat. So what are some of the elements that we can incorporate that provide that sort of peaceful uh, feeling? I, mean, I think it really depends what stage in your life you are for what you want to accomplish in your yard. Um, you know, for, for when we say a peaceful retreat, you know, maybe somebody that's in their 40 or 50s or their kids are grown is going to want a nice quiet sitting area, maybe a tranquil water feature or something like that. Where, where a younger family is going to maybe want more open yard space where they could perhaps put a swing or a playground or, or have the kids play ball sports. Um, so I really I really think it really depends, you know, where you are in your life. And, and the landscape can definitely change over a lifetime. We've done many yards where We've had young families and we've gone in 10 years later and tweaked it and gone 10 years back again and, and, and changed it up completely based on their needs. No, and it is important to really remember that uh, landscape landscaping is alive and it does change over time and you can go in and, and make all of these changes. I do want to touch though on lighting. How uh, is lighting incorporated into landscape design? So landscape lighting actually can do quite a few different things. Some things that people probably don't even really consider. So, you know, it, it definitely is going to accentuate plants and highlight, highlight focal areas in your yard. You can use it to, you know, wash walls, artwork, uh, water features, highlight plants. We also use it to designate pathways. So it creates a safe walking space. Another thing is to consider, especially in people's front yards, um, is landscape lighting also acts as a safety net or a deterrent maybe against people hiding in the bushes or, you know, things like that, where you, you have some more light out there and gives you a little more sense of security. No, it's true. And that's a, that's a great point that the lighting adds beauty, but it also adds another layer of security, especially around our entrance uh, entrances and exits. 
I do have another question though. Uh, we've all started planting things in the yard, a tree here, a tomato plant there. Um, what are the common mistakes that you're seeing as we're all plopping things all over the place in our yards? All right. So, you know, the cute office plant you got for your birthday or maybe Christmas, make sure you know what that cute little plant is. All too often what we see is, you know, somebody brings home a nice little plant or a shrub and, you know, they'll plant it right next to the house or under the eave and that turns into a monster, um, you know, and does damage to either the roof or the foundation. Or even a lot of times we have people plant really root aggressive plants, you know, around utilities like sewer lines or water lines, and that can be a big problem. So, you know, I really caution people to make sure you know what it is you're planting and pick the appropriate spot. There's no bad plants. It, they just need to be planted in the right areas. I love that. There's no, there are no bad plants, but there are bad places to put a plant. Uh, I think that it's appropriate for us to talk water. After all of the heavy rains that we've had, uh, drainage is important. So could you talk a little bit about proper drainage in a yard? Yes. So I think the, the number one mistake in a new installation or even a renovation is the lack of drainage or the lack of proper drainage and grading. So all too often what we'll see is, you know, um, on a new house or even a remodel, someone will build some walls and perhaps, you know, the wall builders left a little bit of excess soil there or didn't take the grade down far enough. And then the landscape gets put in and, and it's not diverting water into the proper areas. And so now suddenly you have issues where the water's coming back towards the house, um, you know, or, or, you know, into the garage or things like that. So it's very, very crucial that people pitch the yard the right way to begin with and then really look at drainage. You know, here in Hawaii, most of our lots are fairly small in comparison to the size of the house footprint that sits on them. So if they're downspouts and all that surface water is captured and diverted properly, nine tenths of your drainage problems are solved. So that's really important, you know, work with a good gutter company and then, you know, your landscape contractor should be able to incorporate a good drainage system that ties into the gutter system. And for most people, that would be very sufficient. So it sounds like it's vital really to work with the, the builder whenever possible. And otherwise you're going to have to address some problems and some issues later. It, I do want to visit the other side of it, though. So if drainage is a major issue, I think irrigation may also be one. Can you talk a little bit about proper irrigation? Sure. So, you know, irrigation, you know, a lot of folks think they don't need irrigation. And, it, and, and in some cases, it's true, you know, if you're up in a really wet area. But we try to look at it, you know, a few years ago, we had a drought and even areas like Nu'uwanu and Pali, where we were doing a, never doing a lot of irrigation, those areas were drying up and the plants were dying. So we try to really tell folks, think of your irrigation system as an insurance policy. You know, you're insuring your plant survival and your grass survival. You might not need it all the time, but when you do need it, you're going to be very glad that you had it. Um, and also make sure it's done properly. Make sure that the piping is correct. You're using good commercial heads and backflow devices so that your potable water source can't be contaminated from the irrigation water. It, it's really important to make sure that those, those steps are done properly. And I guess when we're talking about landscape design and landscaping, I mean, cost is obviously a factor. So can you talk about some of the things that do contribute to cost on a job? Sure. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of the costs are, are dependent on your taste. So if you pick a nice high end lighting system, if we're doing a lot of high end hardscaping, water features, those are all kind of the bells and whistles. They do add up. Um, there are good ways to save money on your project without compromising integrity. So you can downsize some plants and allow them to grow in. That definitely saves some money. If you don't need that instant gratification of having, you know, an immediate screen or a hedge or a big tree. So that's one good way to, to save money with, without compromising the job. Um, things like lighting can always be added on later. 
Um, so that's a way to maybe phase things in and save money. The things that folks really shouldn't skimp on is the basics, the infrastructure, the drainage, the grading, the irrigation. Because once that groundwork is done and you've covered it with plants, it's really humbug to tear it back up and expensive to do it over. No, that's a great point. Nothing is worse than having all of those beautiful plants that you've positioned carefully away from your house. And then now you're digging them all up to get irrigation in. So definitely some good points to share. Uh, while we're on the topic, though, if I want to hire a professional uh, for my yard and I am looking, how should I look? What are the red flags that I should watch out for? What should I expect from a professional landscaper? I think the, the first thing folks should do is, you know, contact the, the, the contractor's license board and make sure that you have a licensed landscape contractor. A general excise license is not a contractor's license. So make sure your contractor is licensed. You can also go through the BBB and check references or see their rating. That's another good avenue. Um, so I, I would say that's kind of your first thing to, to, to go to. Secondly, I would say ask your contractor for references. Talk to some of their prior clients. See if you can look at some of the prior jobs um, and maybe go back a year or two because it says a lot, you know, what, what, what that relationship was like a year after the job was in and how does that job look? How did it withstand the time? And the third thing I think which is really important and a lot of times gets overlooked is really have a good sit down meeting and make sure that you and your contractor see eye to eye and your personalities match because it is a relationship. You, you, you are going to be working very closely together and it's important that you, you see eye to eye. No, those are all great points. And I, I will say being so familiar with your work, it is spectacular. Uh, and the fact that you do have so much return business, uh, the fact that you've refreshed yards 10 years later, maybe after the kids are out of the house. But I do want to take a moment just to go through a few of the uh, many beautiful projects that you've had. And I'd like to pull up a, a couple of photos and just go through this. So this particular landscape, uh, can you describe what we're seeing around the house and how this is uh, positioned? Yeah, so this is a beachfront home in Kailua. Um, they actually called this house the bamboo house. The house is primarily built out of bamboo. Um, so very large open lawn expanse. And we really just try to frame in the perimeter of the house itself with foliage. It's set back from the ocean quite a bit, so it does have some protection. Um, but the thought here was just a very big open vista of grass going out to the ocean. No, that's lovely. And I think it's uh, great to point out, too, that you don't see the grass go all the way up to the edge of the house. And then as far as the uh, the trees and uh, some of the trees that are around the outside of the house, you do anticipate that these are going to continue to mature. Yes, definitely. Yes. And, and you know, it's kind of hard to see in the photo there, but we have the lawn, then we have the planters, and then actually behind the planters, we have about a 12 to 18 inch strip of inert area with that has gravel and river pebbles that actually even keep the foliage away from the base of the house. That is perfect. And then how about this next photo? Uh, I just want you to describe maybe the, the paver area and then also the plants that we're seeing here. Sure. So that that is a, a, a job we did in Waimanalo um, and they that is actually the pedestrian or the, the pathway up to the entry. Um, it's done in random Pukalava pavers um, through the planter areas. It's actually got uh, river cobbles as the inlay. And then as it passes through the planter, then the lawn becomes the ribbons in between. Um, it's actually a really nice island. You don't see it all in this photo, but the, the, it has a really beautiful sea grape tree in the middle that's really architecturally sculpted out. And then it has the, the taro in there and also the dwarf rueo underneath. That is beautiful. And then for in this next photo. Yeah, that that house is up at Hawailoa Ridge. Um, so this house actually overlooks the ocean as well from, from when you're looking out from the pool and off the lanai, which you can't see. Um, this is a very high wind area. Um, so we really try to pick plants on this project that would really tolerate 
a lot of wind and look good and also not shed a lot of debris in the pool. No, and I think that that's very, very important point here uh, to note that if you do have a water feature, uh, you really don't want to have plants that are going to shed a ton, right, into into the into the water there. Um, yeah, and the, the, the pool guy won't be your friend, so you know <laughs> we, they we, they already don't like us all the time, but uh, you know because we got stuff around the pool, but. Um, yeah, you definitely want to pick low maintenance choices. It just makes maintenance a lot easier and it'll look a lot better if it's if it's not super needy. I love it. I love it. And I love the salt and the wind tolerant plants. And I'm sure that you had uh, quite a bit of lighting on this project as well. We're just not we're just not seeing it. Yes, yes. And then can, let's take a look at this next one. I believe this is still the bamboo house, correct? That's correct. Um, that's the bamboo house, and that's actually an outdoor shower that the contractor put in. Uh, we ran the, the pavers up to it. So it's just kind of an outdoor privacy shower as they're returning from the beach where they can maybe shower off prior to going back in, into the residence. And for that, I mean, I'm sure the drainage and everything for the shower was set up, but the uh, the pavers, how did you select that uh, for for really the shower area, how it feels underfoot? Were they going for a particular aesthetic? Yeah, so we really are fans of Pukalava pavers. Um, you know, it's actually a, a, a true cut stone, so it is not, you know, it is not um, man-made. Um, so they, they wear very, very well. They are actually very flat and they come in several finishes. We, we prefer, prefer the one with a kind of a textured finish. So it's, it has a little bit of grip to it. Um, so when it gets wet, you know, on and off from the rain or the shower or whatever, you know, even if it gets a little algae on it, it still has enough grip that people aren't going to slip and fall. And that's a really important thing to consider when you're picking your stepping stones for the outside, make sure they're, they have a little texture to them, especially if you're going to be in a shaded area or a damp area. No, that's an excellent point for safety. And then finally, this last one, can you just describe what we're seeing here? Uh, and then this, this giant tree. So this is actually a, 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 a bigger view of that earlier picture. That is actually that sea grape tree that I had mentioned. Um, so we're, we're now looking through that island as it goes towards the entry of the home there. Um, and so that sea grape tree's got a lot of really pretty lighting in it. So do the coconuts. Um, so this yard, this yard shines really nice at night. It's got a really nice ambiance to it. It's, it's a really beautiful landscape. No, thank you. And were you, did you actually install already around this existing tree? Oh uh, yeah. So that tree was existing when we got there. Um, so we did all, we did do the installation around the tree. Um, we pretty much did all the exterior work, um, on that project in terms of landscaping and, and, uh, hardscape. Thank you so much for going through this with us today. And, you know, you are just such a talented professional and I thank you for your time and sharing your expertise today. If someone does want to get a hold of you and take advantage of your expertise, how would they do that? Um, there's a couple of ways. You folks can give us a call at our office, which is 808-676-9166. You can email us at stevegardening at aol.com. And you can also look us up on the web at stevesgardeningservice.com. So there's there's three methods where you can get a hold of us. Or you Thank can look you up so much. In, oh, sorry. Or you can look up our ad in Hawaii Home and Remodeling and find us there as well. <laughs> thank you again, Steve. I really do appreciate it. And I just want to thank you and Pacific Pool and Spa. Without their sponsorship and support, we would not have been able to present this seminar. If you are considering adding a pool or water feature, check out the pros at Pacific Pool and Spa. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everybody, and stay safe. Thank you.